Welcome to r slash Tales from Your Server. It's the place where waiters share awesome stories about their guests. For today, we have three good stories. So subscribe, hit the like button, and here we go. The first story is The Night of the Living Vegans. Greetings, first time poster, long time lurker. You know that jazz. Let me paint you the scene. This is a few years ago. I work in a newly opened restaurant in a busy tourist city in the UK. The restaurant is a large well-known chain that specializes in westernized Asian food. We'll call it actually FU, since this fits the company's style of management aptly, but I shall try to avoid ranting about it. We are the flagship restaurant of our region. As such, we often play host to special marketing events. In this case, the company has just launched its new vegan menu, and it's eager to pimp it out to the locals, since we have a very big vegan community in the city. We are chosen to host a special night in which a number of vegan bloggers, Instagrammers, various influencers, and local vegan celebrities will be attending. They will be given the entire upstairs area to dine in, while the lower floor will operate as normal. Their food is free all night, as well as a pretty generous bar tab with free champagne. The night starts as normal, the guests arrive, everyone seems happy at first, the new restaurant gets comments, several selfies are taken, but immediately we get our first complaint. Her, excuse me, I need a window seat. Now to explain our layout, the upper floor is more or less a giant balcony. There's one window that faces out onto the street, but there is a gap of roughly 20 meters between the edge of the upper floor and it. Me, I can ask if some people are willing to move and get you closer to the railing, certainly. Her, no, not the railing, the window. I need the light from the window. She then angrily points down to the lower floor, where there are several window seats. All are occupied. Her, get them to move. Me, I'm really sorry, but the lower floor is for the restaurant. We've reserved the entire upper floor for the event, and her cutting me off. Then we'll all move downstairs. She then proceeds to get up and move downstairs, sitting at another table. My GM tells me to let her go, and so she stays down there all night, eventually ordering three things, then leaving early. She would become the least of our problems. The second complaint comes a mere moment later. Him. Excuse me, is this window west-facing? Me. I'm sorry? Him. The window. Is it west-facing? Me. No, sorry, it faces east. Him. Oh, do you have a west-facing window? Me. Uh, no. Points to the opposite wall. There's another building through there, so we can't have a window. Him. Then how am I supposed to watch the sunset? Me. There's a park outside. You can go there to watch it and we'll keep your food warm for you. Him. Typical. Of course you'd expect me to have to go outside just to see the sun. The evening carries on. About an hour in, the noise level from upstairs is getting out of control. We receive several complaints from customers. A waiter tries to ask them politely to be a little quieter, which ends in a rousing chorus of shh from everyone upstairs before they all break into laughter. The third complaint comes shortly after. Her. Excuse me, could I get another drink? The ice is melted and watered this one all down. Me, thinking she's trying one of our fancy new cocktails. Certainly, ma'am. Picking up a glass which seems to be all water. What was your drink? Her. Some of the stuff in the blue bottle over there. Me. Looks over and notices she's pointing at a regular bottle of water. This one here? Picks up water. Her. Yeah, that one. Could I get a fresh glass, please? Me. Ma'am, this is water. Her. Yes, it's lovely. Me. Ma'am, ice is made of water. Her. Looks at me as if I just insulted her mother. I know that. I'm not 12. But the ice is not made from that water, idiot. Turning to her friend, tutting, honestly. Me, I see, would you like fresh ice as well? Her, of course. About two hours in and it has become apparent that the company has completely underestimated the amount of food the event would order. The kitchen is being slammed, as are the waiters, to the point where actual paying customers are getting their food late. The head chef makes the decision to start ignoring food requests from upstairs and prioritize customers. This does not go over well with the upstairs. We received 23 complaints in total, many along the lines of, I cannot write about this favorably in my blog, with at least two stating the infamous line, don't you know who I am? My favorite being, her, don't you know who I am? Blank from blank.com. Look that up, blank.com. Look at all the followers. Look at all the comments. Everyone knows me. I'm a living god in this business. Your company knows that and that is why I'm here, because one word for me and you will never work in this industry again. No serious business will give you a job. Once I tell them how poor your customer service is. The backlog clears and the upstairs starts receiving food again. Then the Wi-Fi goes down. Turns out they are all using the Wi-Fi to upload selfies of themselves and the food, as well as live stream themselves over YouTube and such, and our terrible cloud service cannot handle it. Fortunately, a quick router reset fixes the problem, but not before. Him. I was streaming. Streaming. Like people do in the 21st century, you know? 
Do you know how many viewers I lost by going down without warning? That's money to me. Four hours in and the noise is now unbearable. Customers downstairs are either complaining or just leaving. As a result, it starts to become quiet downstairs, with most customers so put off by the noise they simply won't come inside. The management decides we've ran out of the free champagne, and several remaining bottles are discreetly removed. As you can imagine, the idea the group now has to pay for its drinks does not go over well, but the complaints are more just disappointment, and most of them start ordering drinks immediately. So at least we're making money now. They drink, scream, laugh, take endless selfies, and throw things well into the night. We close at 11 p.m., and none of them make any move to leave. We stop taking food orders much to their dismay, and at 12 a.m. the bar closes. Two of them leave and try to return with several bottles of wine. 1 a.m. rolls by. The management agree they will babysit the group. The chefs and the waiters all go home, leaving just us floor managers and 40 drunk, loud, vegan bloggers. 3 a.m. finally arrives, and with it, the single most amazing customer complaint I've ever received in the 11 years I've worked in retail and services. Her, excuse me, but I keep trying to order this, points at the small iPad each guest has been given. This is equipped with an app that allows them to order the food without having to bother a waiter. But it keeps saying service offline. What's wrong with it? Me, I'm afraid the kitchen is closed. Her, why? Me, it's 3 a.m. Her, then open it. Me, I can't. The chefs have all gone home for the night. Her, why? Me, it's 3 a.m. Her, so call them back. Me, they'll be asleep. Her, why? Me, it's 3 a.m. Her, so, why'd you let them go home then? Me, it's 3 a.m. Her stares at me confused. Me, the restaurant closes at 11. Her looks at watch, but it isn't 11. Me, yes, it's 3 a.m. Her, so when can I get food? Me, at 11 a.m. when the restaurant reopens. Her, ah, looking at me with that matter-of-factly look in her eye. But you said it closes at 11. Me, yes, 11 p.m. Her, exactly. Me, but reopens at 11 a.m. Her, so how am I supposed to get food? Me, there's a McDonald's across the street that is 24-7. Her, oh, fantastic. I'll take a veggie burger and large fries, please. Me, not quite catching on. Yeah, you can see it just over there. Her, yes, I know, so? Looks at me expectantly. Me, I'm not going to McDonald's for you. This does not go over well. The woman rises from her seat, a look of pure thunder on her face. Now, I should point out that this is by no means a small woman. She has considerable dimensions in both the X and Y axis. As she stands, her mask knocks over the table. Everything on it, bottles, cups, several plates fall onto the floor. The noise causes everyone to go silent and stare at this. Vast woman emerges from the dust and debris of my shattered dreams. Her, shouting. I was invited here to your corporate BS party to enjoy myself. Do you think I do not know I'm only here to give you idiots a positive review? Do you think I can't smell a bribe when I see one? And now you try to palm me off with cheap McDonald's cheeseburgers to cover your SH customer service? Well, you can effing stuff it. Or words to that effect, anyway. I was tired, she was clearly drunk, she slurred, and, it being the country it is, there was far more swearing. But I've covered the rough idea of what she said. She eventually storms off, stumbling but refusing any help from the management staff or the rest of the group to help her down the stairs. She fails to slam the door behind her. The rest of the group start to filter out slowly. A few apologize for her. A few more thank us for staying open, and at least proclaim they had a wonderful time. Finally, by 4 a.m., they've all left. The upper floor of the store is a mess. Discarded wrappers, placemats, chopsticks, you name it, litter the floor. Drinks have been spilled everywhere. The entire place stinks of booze and soy sauce. We lost about 30 plates and glasses due to breakages, and a large number of cutlery was stolen. Someone even stole the toilet paper out of the bathroom. Four tables had to be replaced, and two staff failed to show up for work the next day. It took us so long to clean up, the opening chefs arrived before we'd finished and helped us out. I finally got home around 9 a.m., we were budgeted to lose about 2,000 pounds worth of food. We actually lost 9,000 pounds worth of food. The event was never ran again, and as far as I'm aware, was not run in any other store, outside of a few other trial flagships. The second story is, server, not servant. We don't work for free. So, I work for a place that's a cafe during the day and a nightclub at night. It's an adventure, and I love every minute of it. Sundays are insane. Usually, the Saturday night close is rough, but I've learned to expect that and I won't speak badly about those that served until 3 a.m. and just were too tired to restock some napkins. I get it, dude. Sunday is also walk-in 10 to 16 top day. It never fails. We get large groups back to back. We had a 15-person table come in, and my coworker Sam, name changed, had it put in his section, and it took up every table he was assigned. Sam is a great server. He's been in the industry for years and knows his stuff. He was attentive, constantly giving refills, making them laugh, etc. As things come to an end, people began leaving, so Sam asked if the check was all on one. 
Everyone at his table just looked around at each other, and it was obvious that they had not planned out whether one person was footing the bill, or if everyone was going separate. Half the table had left at this point, so one of the older gentlemen said, I guess it's on one. Sam took him the bill, and after they cashed out, they quickly left. This table left him $7 on a $240 check. Sam was devastated. They had been there through the entire lunch rush, so he missed out on a lot of turnaround that made the rest of us some really good money. He told me that he was counting on today so that he could make his rent, and now he wasn't sure what to do. He was going to ask to work a double after already working a double the day prior. Side note, I get that people should manage money accordingly, but I don't know his personal life, and some of us live day by day. I was there recently. I get it. Zero judgment. I felt so bad for him that I printed off another copy of the check and put $40 into a book with it and stacked it in some books by the register. I pretended that I had lost a signed receipt and was going through them next to him. I casually opened the one with his name in it and said, Sam, you left money in here, you idiot, and handed it to him. I pretended to find mine and casually walked away. He came up to me and said that he was super confused, because he had had only one book at the table, but now there was this one. I just looked at him and said, some things aren't worth investigating. I'm telling this story because I want everyone to know that there are good people in the world. We all will get that SH table or Karen's or a bad night, but I'm always looking out for my coworkers. I'm a strong believer in treat the way you want to be treated, and I'm hoping my message will inspire others to offer to do a little extra side work or bring in some snacks to share during the rush. Little things go a long effing way in this rough business. We're servers, not servants. This isn't slavery with extra steps. And the last story is… To the couple with the tiny dinosaur. Last night we did $4,000 at our pub in about 2 hours, 9pm to 11pm. When you two came in, I didn't smile. I was already broken from standing 6 hours with no break, running up and down stairs to the mezzanine because Brittany needed a glass of water that she couldn't have asked me for when I was just at her table taking a drink order for everyone else. She didn't touch it, of course, wanting to utilize it for the observation of condensation instead. You sat on the mezzanine, overlooking the bar, watching the three of us scramble to pour beers, run food, wash dishes, and bust tables, while our only bartender put on her stone face and chanted, not tonight, not tonight. I forgot to put in your drinks and calmly, screaming inside, said I'd be back with waters and that we were backed up. You took it well. Spying the couch and armchair farthest away from the stairs, you asked if you could move tables. I'd already put your food in for the table you're at. Internal banshee noises. Sure, I smiled tightly inside. You ended up loving your new corner and asking me if I was okay. Told me take my time. You got our cocktail with a tiny dinosaur in it and we discussed what it could be. Velociraptor. I looked later and we joked together. Despite my 30,000 steps, endless side-eye disappointment and rude gesticulations from the vast majority of my customers that night, you made me feel like I was seen, really seen for the first time and I meant something to your overall experience. After you left, smiles and kind words and encouragement, I got around to opening your checkbook. Four $5 bills and a handwritten note. Thank you for a pleasant experience. You rock. You saved me last night. Wherever you two are, thank you. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Have a nice day.